People who speak English as a second language, what phrases or concepts from your native tongue you want to use in English but can't because locals wouldn't understand? The Finnish word kalsarinit because I enjoy taking the occasional beer and hate being around people. From Urban Dictionary, drinking by yourself at your house in your underwear with no intention of going out. And for literal translation, kalsarit underpants, or long johns, nit being drunk, getting wasted. Edit, clarified translation and thanks for my first awards. Maybe I will do a kalsarikni tonight. Pajama drunk, there, now we have an English word for it. Hey, you want to hit the clubs this weekend? Nah, I'd rather be pajama drunk. Pajama drunk do 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 pajama drunk da do do do. In Italian we have two different ways of saying I love you. One is ti voglio bene, it's that kind of profound affection you have for family or for friends. Then we have ti amo, and you only use it for your partner when you feel you're really in love with them. Same in Spanish. Teres te quiero and te amo. And then we have te quila when you're really in love. Te quila is when you want to fall in love. One we, Danish, use a lot as bajirnechines the bear's favor which means to do something with good intentions but it having ducking horrible consequences. I just noticed the concept's absence a lot, because acknowledging good and bad in one word cuts down on a lot of moral argument back and forth. It's technically based on an old Greek or Persian fable. It's about a bear and his gardener friend chilling until a bee landed on the gardener's face. The bear wanted to do the man a favor and swat the bee away, but being a bear, tore off his face. He had good intention but now the gardener has no face. Edit, the road to hell is paved with good intentions is not quite what I mean, it's a reflective saying that's used during the said ensuring moral argument, whereas this is the name of the act itself. I'll acknowledge it up here so if you want to reply with that, it has been mentioned please stop spamming my inbox. Edit 2. No deed goes unpunished is very different and I don't like it, it's horribly cynic in nature. It's a defeatist sentiment, like damned if you do damned if you don't you will be punished so there's no need to think. A bear's favor has no relation to being punished or not, it's about the harm you cause others. A bear's favor is one fuck up, a more gentle reminder that this time you thought out your ass and not your ears, so you should be more cautious and mindful in the future with your help, but not a resigned eternal rule of cosmic punishment. ITT Slavic languages complaining about the lack of swear words in English. Yes I agree. 90% of swears in Slavic language will be translated as duck shit. Professional Russian here, you're a bit off the mark. Only about 30, maybe 40% of our swears translate to the English equivalent of duck shit. I've never learned Russian so probably you are right. I refered to Polish alphabet where most of swears will be translated like I said in my upper comment. In Germany Therese this cool word called doc. it's used like this, instead of yes, I am, you aren't smart. Yes, I am. It's just way shorter because it's just one word. I need that. I like how laconic German can be. Why use many words when few do trick? German efficiency carries over to language. Who knew? Tia. Mixnix. In Omani Arabic we use the word ta'iq back. It means, your actions what you said lead me to be confused on your intention. That's really useful. The whole internet should adopt it. If only we could type it. Yeet. I ain't no ta'iq back girl. Many languages have a lot more swear words, and a lot more creative ways to avoid swearing in front of kids. It's kind of like a fun mini-game. True. In my country swearing can bring people together instead of offending them. We have that type of country too, it's called Australia. What they do with fewer words to work with is astounding, Scotland a near but solid second place. I've found that in Northern England they just make every word into a swear word. As an American with an English wife, I was legitimately shocked at the sheer volume of British swears that we're totally unaware of, unless you watch a ton of 15 and 18 rated English content. In Swedish at a word called fika it mean go and get something to eat like a snack or a drink. It like wanna get some coffee? Just fika is more open to what you want. And I don't like coffee so this line does not work for me. Tongue edit, 
while this exploded over a few hours. I find it funny when I hear one of our word can be vulgar in another language. It like I remember laughing as a child, when learning the word kiss English meaning, kissing was in my language, kiss, mean P in Swedish. Did not help when I heard when, a kid there was a rock band were named kiss. And sorry for bad grammar. Thanks for reading XD. Italian here, we giggle internally whenever we think of you fellow Swedes talking about getting some fika. It's very close to the word for pussy in Italian lol. It's very close to the word pussy in Swedish too. Fika snack, fit a pussy. Till. I would like to introduce the Dutch expression Zane Kat Sturen, to send one's cat, to the English language. It means not showing up. Examples, almost everyone's present for the meeting, but Tom sent his cat again. Are you coming to the party tonight? I don't think so, I feel tired. I think I'll send my cat. Edit, this expression appears to be used only in Belgium and not in the Netherlands, corrected two errors. I have four cats, and I would love to send my cat to work from time to time. I am definitely going to start using this, translation be damned. In Dutch we have a handy word called betershap it's just, is someone feeling sick, ill or in any way hurt, you can use this. It kind of means get better soon and best of luck with what you're dealing with at once. But can you say it's someone who hiccuped? When someone hiccuped, coughed or sneezed we'd say gezonheid which literally translated means health but we say it in the sense of wishing someone the best health possible. It's similar to betershap but not the same. In Turkish there is kolay gelsin which roughly translates to have an easy job, said to people who are working on a job task shift or studying something. It's a great phrase to use at the end of the conversation, to wrap up. Oh how about Alina Sok which is totally worse. Translates into I wish health to your hand that's said to the people that make food for you. I am a native Czech speaker. In a lot of Slavic languages, there's such a thing as softening a word, which exaggerates that the thing is either very small or weak. Example, cola a ball colica a marble. Like Ido in Spanish? And in Ho in Portuguese. It's interesting that we have Ido too, but it's not that common. The concept of, philodimo. It encompasses a lot of different personality traits so it can't really be translated directly. It describes someone who's honorable and hardworking and kind, often expecting no reward for his help yet going above and beyond what's expected of him. It's a good word. How does it compare to altruistic? Close but not the same. Altruism doesn't imply any sort of striving or working harder than most. As someone who grew up speaking both Dutch and French, it always blows my mind when I realize that the English language doesn't have a specific word for the day after tomorrow. Hashtag X200B, edit, I see quite some people are suggesting over Moro. I'm not sure how common it is, since in all the English films and series I've watched, I didn't encounter it once. And a few weeks ago I tried to use this word on an English writing test, but it got marked as a too literal translation by my teacher. Hashtag X200B, for those confused since the French word would be Apres de Mon, I believe that this word is way easier and faster to say, but that may be because I've used it my whole life. Hmm, Vermorgan. Vermorgan. Hazelic in Dutch has a lot of different meanings. Like a room can be hazelic. In English it would be cozy I guess but when you have a good time with friends it can also be hazelic and then cozy is not the good word for it. Also a person him herself can be hazelic and in English it would be a nice person. Edit, said something twice. Edit again, spelling. German has pretty much TBE same concept and gesellig guess being neighbors does show. Tanto pito para cagar aguado. It translates, loosely, to so much farting for such soft watery shit. Slang way of saying, all this fuss for nothing. Ha ha, in Russian it goes like when a mountain gives birth to a mouse. In Portuguese we have the exact same saying, a montanha pariah amrado. English lack of swear words polish has so many swear words for every occasion and they're much more expressive than your duck I want to build a sentence based purely on swears when I'm angry but I can't really do it using one word edit. I know there are more swear words in English, yes but I don't feel like I can express myself enough using only fuck, different versions of it, or calling people names. You're missing the point of a notional strength of this word. As a Russian kid growing up, 
I learned the best chains of the best curse words from my mom. She could put six of them together into one word it really is an art lol. Russian cursing is next level, with phrases like duck you with the crutch you use because your leg was blown off in the war. My favorite is the Indian expression I'll plant a mango tree in your mom's cunt so I can have some shade while I duck your sister.